Jonathan and Dilla, I loved our conversation. That was extremely, extremely fun. Uh, here are my notes about the Lime Coats strategy session. And I'm going to wander around for a second and just give you my afterthoughts. Um, I did find um, an article about the National Lawyers Guild and how their legal observers or LOs wear lime green hats. And here's the article, the green hats at the protests, National Lawyers Guild legal observers. And uh, here, in fact, is a picture of lawyers in green hats so that people know that they're there. It's really, really interesting. Uh, this is part of the uh, Occupy Wall Street uh, movement way back when. But that's a small side note to what we were talking about. And I was really interested in this idea of kind of add water and stir lime coats of uh, do lime coats come in from elsewhere or do they materialize from the local crowd? And if so, um, how do we train people beforehand to be lime coats so that there are some around in the event of emergency? Uh, and I, I was pondering, you know, there could, somebody could shout out, is there a lime coat in the room? Uh, because after a while, because of uh, their great uh, halo effect and mythology that we start to understand that there are hero lime coats that could be available. Uh, and so there's this whole question about how do you select, train, or equip lime coats that kind of seems to fit um, if lime coats are, so if lime coats are actually, um, uh, here, let me connect that to the question of do lime coats come in from elsewhere or are they materializing from the crowd? Um, and so really the, the question winds up being how do you get people to um, become lime coats on their own and what is the training there? Like certainly the training matters regardless of what's happening because it's potentially very dangerous to be a lime coat. Uh, and one of the things that, that you were saying is like, you don't keep lime coats safe. You build a myth of heroism around them and they just sort of march in, I guess. Uh, maybe they have a motto of fearless into danger and uh, that I connected to running toward danger, which I didn't have before. And I connected that to superheroes because that's what superheroes do. And there's also a recent memoir titled Run Towards the Danger, Confrontations with a Body of Memory uh, and so forth. But I think we have to be a little careful here because uh, sometimes amateurs, in fact, make things worse. And you don't want to make things worse. So um, a piece of what it seems Lime Coats should do from our conversation is listen carefully and listen actually well and maybe be some of what police forces and other uh, forces that show up aren't doing or can't do. Uh, and that was really interesting to me because this, this notion, I think we all agreed a lot that policing was pretty broken. And um, there's, you know, there have been many efforts for police reform, uh, many of which have failed, which have led to these movements to actually somehow reform the police, one of which we talked about a bunch, abolish the police as the world's worst title, but really interesting intentions in that how might we take all the things that have been dropped on police forces plate and shift them back toward other agencies, other parties better equipped to do them? Uh, so um, I think we will we'll probably we ran 60 minutes. I wanted to go longer and I think we may reconvene, but it seems like there's a lot of very interesting, juicy stuff for us to talk about there. Uh, alongside the poetics of lime coding, I thought, what is the limocratic oath? How do we actually uh, get people to uh, kind of pledge this something realistic as they become, as they volunteer to become lime coats? Uh, that goes hand in hand with this idea of having to be accountable for your action as a lime coat. And I think these are, these things are, are hard to hard to hold in balance. Here's the thought that I put in my brain. Amateurs can make crises worse. And here I was actually thinking about some stories I read about might have been Haiti, might have been a, a crisis before that. I think it was before Haiti, uh, where some friends of mine uh, were trying to take Wi-Fi gear and other radio gear to a disaster area and be helpful. And my friends were actually really smart, but they ran into people who were just trying to pour used radio gear into the area. And it turns out that when you bring uh, some random radio on and you turn it on and you start to basically uh, tie up airwaves, you can block other successful and useful 
uh, radios from use. And uh, uh, it turns out that the U.S. military has some extremely interesting gear that they can drop into a zone. They can then do a survey of the airwaves at the time and figure out uh, what will work, what won't work. And uh, they can coordinate various users, various uh, uses of the, the radios that they set up. That All of that is really interesting. And that's just radio communications in the event of an emergency. So obviously there's, there's plenty of other things to do. Um, so there's, there's also a, a flavor here of emergence of how do you get people who are brave enough and clever enough and well-trained enough to show up in an event and then to collaborate to solve what needs to be solved in the problem. And after 9-11, famously, there was a, a group of people who met in a command center uh, near Ground Zero and they were highly functional. They would basically share resources and questions uh, every day, maybe several times a day. I don't remember the story. Um, and at one point, FEMA and other large official agencies who should have been in charge of an emergency showed up. And it appears that they had the wisdom to step back and recognize that this emergent group of leaders were highly capable in dealing with uh, the, the pressing emergency at hand in 9-11. So how can we learn from that? Uh, then finally, uh, I connected up to this Navy SEAL piece of advice that says, hey, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. And so how can uh, Lime Coats learn that they don't have to rush in someplace, but rather uh, maybe by sometimes by slowing things down, they can be of more help than by doing the wrong thing really quickly. Those are my thoughts for now. I will probably have others, but that's my, these are my afterthoughts for you from the Pictures Brain session we just ran on March 29th, uh, 2022. Thank you for uh, picking my brain. I really appreciate it.